Welcome to Inferno and Rao the channel. This is first of all for you people following black metal and beyond. This time I am happy to have one of the biggest Swedish black metal bands with me here for I hope in-depth talk. Sir, please state your name and why the fuck are you having this conversation with me? Uh, Eric is my name. Um, I think it's good to uh, do interviews every now and then and not to I don't know, be too silent and be too, like, alienated from, I don't know, the youth of today, I suppose. <laughs> no, but it's, it's always good to have a, I try to do, like, maybe one interview every festival just to clean up the voice a little bit. And actually, I don't know, for me, it's a pretty good mood setter also to talk about what hey, and what we do and, and so on before we go on stage. I think for me, it's, it's always, like, can be pretty inspiring. Good. So I hope to inspire that's, you. That's, I guess, why I'm here. All right. That's good, because I hope to inspire you with Thank this you. conversation. And uh, let's see how many bones we can find from the grave. Uh, that being said, let's start with something very easy, yet a little bit goofy also. A lot of black metal bands, of course, when I ask them to introduce them, even if I know the names before, but a lot of band members obviously have a nickname, some kind of a pseudonym for the band and also. Mm -hmm. But you always just be in Eric. Of what yeah, time, instead yeah. of some evil messiah or whatever, mm. why did you decide to go against the grain? Yeah, exactly. Uh, we had some idea uh, pretty early on that we wanted to um, be quite straightforward with, with what we were doing. We didn't really want to. We did. We, we were already at the point in our lives when we were that young, 16, 17, 18, when, we, when our lifestyles could be pretty much directly translated into what we were doing with the band. You know, we, we didn't have to really search for uh, pseudonyms, for example. I think we, all, we felt pretty much at home with where we were in our lives, you know. So it was kind of a way to take away one barrier between us and, and the crowd. You know, this is who I am, this is what we do. This is my name, and that's that's what you get, you know, and that's an approach that we've been trying to keep since then, really. Um, for me, it's uh, there's definitely been times when uh, when I regretted it, you know. I, I can mm -hmm. be, I, I mean, it would be nice to be called Kronos or something like that, mm -hmm. but because it. It, it's proven to be a little bit problematic sometimes to, to keep the real name. But but all in all, I think it boils down to what we're doing is quite personal, and, and it's it's me doing it. It's not my alter ego. It's it's me. Yeah, you're not hiding really anything. You are openly even go with the uh, Vatine outfit, you know, like a motorcycle gang thing even, and you're like giving like, hey, this is a this is the band I'm doing and... Yeah, I mean, for me, that's always been the natural approach. And it's also been the natural approach of most of the bands that I really like, you know. Uh, this more straightforward approach where... Uh, I mean, if you want to do something for a long time, you won't be able to hide behind anything. People are going to figure that out and it's going to become quite awkward. So I thought it was always best to, like, keep it, keep it kind of straightforward from the start. Especially with the current state when we have technology and people are having databases like yeah. metal archives and whatever. Yeah, exactly. Real names are anyway being yeah. exposed. So. And I mean that that's maybe one of the things where I you know if, if we knew that our names would be you know possible to Google mm -hmm. 10 years after we formed the band I think we might have you know considered using different names. Uh, because you, you can still go through person and chase my own name every yeah, few years. Yeah, exactly. No, but anyway, it's it's. Uh, I'm, I'm. There's now. There's something to it, you know. Now, yeah. now I, I kind of uh, value that aspect too. I, I, I don't regret it. To put it like that, I think it's kind of. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty proud of that we took that choice. All right, let's talk a little bit about the music, because music always comes first when you're talking about bands, even though in black metal also it always goes hand in hand with the ideology and philosophy, right. lyrics and all that stuff. At least I hope that's the case with a lot of bands. Mm. But first I want to do a little bit of brown nosing, which I don't usually like to do. But in my opinion, your latest album is the best so far you've done. And it Thank seems al also, also like weird, because I think it was Wild Hunt, which... Like pretty much everybody, I didn't want to use the word hate, but felt like this is where Watain slipped 
and okay. felt a little bit, this is, seems to be the kind of a consensus, but suddenly oh, you came back with even stronger albums like before and you've maintained and even taken to a new level with the latest album. Mm. Um, how do you see your career by now with those many albums in and yet being very true to Vatine Roots, you all also changed the style of music a little bit over the years. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, I think it's it's uh, it's important to always stick to your guns, you know, no, no matter what you do as an artist and as a musician. It's important to not let external expectations or opinions, for that matter, color any of your work. I think that the second you start doing that, you become a, a whore, you know. And uh, nothing wrong with being a whore, but I think being a musical whore means just trying to please people. Like selling and, out, effectively. Yeah, it's it's just I think it's that that's such a there's such an easy definition of that uh, selling out, and I think that that definition is that when you when you start to adapt your style after what other people think. For example, if we wouldn't have done Wild Hunt, if we would have done Lawless Darkness Part Two, that would have been selling out on our part because that was probably what a lot of younger people at least was expecting and kind of was was after. But we, in that case, you know, decided to stick to our guns and and try and, and try to elaborate our our not our style, but but our our create our creativity. Really, we were fucking we were hungry to do more than than what we had done up till then, you know. And uh, with that being said, I think that's always been the case for us. Like with with the wild hunt, we were. That's maybe one of the more obvious examples of, of, of us really just going the way w we wanted to because it, it led us into some new territories. There are a few tracks on that album that are a bit different. And same thing on Trident Wolf Eclipse. We were also like, let's write a fucking violent cunt of an album, you know, like, like an obnoxious fucking beast of an album. Uh, let's stick to like total distortion, fucking, you know, the old old school, like really harsh style. And that's what we did then. And now we did this album with, with everything that that implies. So, so I, I, that's always been our target to just like, what do we want to do? What, what's relevant here and now? Because it needs to feel relevant. You know, it needs to feel urgent. You can't fucking sit down and write music that that you're writing just because it's supposed to be in a certain style. Let's make a band that sounds like Blasphemy. Yeah. I mean, or you just listen to Blasphemy and do something that that yeah. means something to you, you know? So 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 that's my that's my approach. So so yeah, that's that's how we work. And and that's that's the only way I want to work. You know, it's the only way that's interesting to me and and of course, it will mean stepping on people's fragile little toes and making them upset because we don't do exactly what they expect all the time. But that's that's part of the fun, you know. Now th that is something that puzzles me. You became one of the biggest bands in in Sweden in terms of black metal, especially. Yeah. I mean, you're becoming mm. climbing up the ladder by labels as well. Mm. And uh, as a, when it comes to the quality of music, it doesn't really surprise me. Mm. But more like the, the the pace, the fastness. I mean, mm. you've made it faster than a lot of those older bands, which kind of also get mm. their mo engine going, but you somehow like decided to change to a higher gear and like, fuck off, we're gonna go past you with the style. And you at the same time managed to be dangerous on stage. Mm. I mean, you have fire and the element of mysticism and like giving the old 1990s feeling on stage. Mm. But that's not supposed to be very sellable product, yeah, yeah, if you know I, what I mean. I so how can you make it happen? What's the secret or was it did it surprise you as well um i don't know if it surprised me yeah, maybe a little bit sometimes but i think the answer is to and i i'm i'm probably gonna sound maybe a little bit arrogant now but but there is no other band like like Vatain. uh you know i mean a lot of people lump us together with 
Swedish black metal, Marduk and Dark Funeral and, and uh, Batain. Yeah, but we are not like Marduk or Dark Funeral. We're a completely different band. You know, we, what we do on the stage is completely different. What we say in interviews is completely different. The time we put into everything, not only the music, but everything, is completely different from what those other bands do. And those were just two examples, you know. I love Marduk. Uh, but, but, uh, but there is no other band like us. There is no other Norwegian band like us. There is no other Swedish band like us. There is no band from our generation worldwide that does the same thing that we do. We, we, we really found our own way of working. And I think that way has a lot to do with a genuine passion, you know, that I guess every artist says about their own work. But in our case, I think we have all the right to do so. It has to do with hard fucking work, uh, day and night, for years, for 25 years. Consistent, without any breaks, without any, you know, longer, like, let's not do the band for a while. We never had that. Uh, without, you know, compromising, w w without anything. And I, and I think people rightfully are a bit fascinated with that, because they're like, what are these guys? This is something else. I, I, I think so. I, I, uh, and, and it may, kind of makes sense. You know, people are after real things. People are after things that feel worked through and thought through and, and passionate and not like half-assed or, you know, a little bit half-fake or, or stuff like that. I think people are fascinated by genuine things. And I think that's why. Uh, you know, uh, I completely understand what you're saying with that this is some of the things we are doing are far too extreme to be like commercialized or bit or commercialized is maybe the wrong word but like appreciated by a lot of people exactly but at the same time you know it that can also be applied to to take the example that we're in now to like old Norwegian black metal where people died burned down buildings built bombs yeah, took their own lives, took photos of each other when they were dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's way more extreme, if, if you will, than, than what we are doing externally and show to people. And you still have busloads of black metal tourists here today who are completely fascinated with that scene. So I guess there is something with this, like, raw power that, that fascinates people. And I think that's maybe the answer to, to your question. I think that's maybe why, why Vatain has continued to, to grow and to, to gain more followers, because they are fascinated by that there is something still like pulsating and alive and, and real in, in the band. Now, yesterday, I did one, uh, well, sorry, Thursday, in one of the interviews with one of the older guys from Norwegian scene and we were talking about like how black metal felt, felt dangerous when we were like teenagers, mm -hmm. like early 90s, yeah. like the two or three years age difference with of those uh, people from the same city or same scene might felt like, wow, those are old mm -hmm. school. And of course, nowadays it doesn't. And throughout these changes, obviously we're guys in our 40s or whatever, mm -hmm. It's not really dangerous in that sense, but it also seems like uh, the whole scene is attracting a lot of what we could say a little bit of elite snobbery, call them black metal tourists. Mm. Like they are doing those black packer bus rides or whatever, and mm. they are being attracted to that. But is it good and healthy for black metal community, for the lack of better word, mm. or scene, or is it just a mandatory thing we need to have in order to sustain this whole? industry if you will I, I think the the black metal essence and the well, the, the things that define this 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 movement are completely uh, uh, unattached to any fucking tourist bus ride or or PowerPoint presentation of, of black metal which they are doing at the festival like this you know. I feel very alienated from that. I feel very, I, 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 I try not to think about it while I'm here because for, for me it's a little bit problematic to be honest that this, these things exist, but they do. And let's, if, if we look back 30 years, I mean, you will always have die-hard black metal people who have been into this for a little more and a little longer and a, a, yeah, a, with a little bit more passion than 
others, and they will always say, and they said it already 30 years ago, and they said it 20 years ago, and they said it 10 years ago, these fucking trend children everywhere, you know, the jump on this fucking black metal trend, what the fuck are they doing here? It's, it's not a new thing. It's, it's always been like that. Since Euronymous died, you had 14-year-olds all over the world who were starting up black metal bands and trying to do similar things. And, and that was embarrassing. And then 10 years later, you had Cradle of Filth and Dimmerborg coming out and people jumping on that, and it just got worse. And, you know, there's always stuff to complain about, but... And I do, you know, in my privacy, <laughs> much more than publicly, but I think that for me, in order to like maintain, to, to, to be able to do what we do with Latane, which is still like be an active band, represent to some extent black metal on a larger scale today, I think for me it's been quite important to, I wouldn't say ignore, but like kind of look away a little bit from all this bullshit that's going on and focus on the things that actually still really matter to me, the stuff that I feel deeply about still, you know, after all these years. Uh, there's always been a lot of fucking bullshit connected to this music scene. So many fucking embarrassing, misled people who, who, di who, who don't, just don't get it, you know. But luckily we are, we are not, uh, we don't belong to them and, and we, we're, gonna, we're gonna do what's right. And that's, that's the way I see it. Now a little bit continuation to that. Mm -hmm. I've noticed the very same pattern as you probably have using social media. Like you have people who are named after like black metal people, like some Euronymous, uh, Jon Vate, what yeah. kind of stuff? Like, what yeah, the yeah, fuck? Yeah. And they come from, I don't know, various countries, don't even yeah. have the same country setting. And like, what the fuck? This is like mm. the, exactly like Varivikernes, Mayhem, Bonemarduk. And you're like, what the fuck is going on with yeah. these guys? And but that's, like where, that's where I draw a line. You know, for, for me, it's like, like, for me, that's so far removed from the life I live, so far removed from, you know, my intake of black metal, like I'm not part of that scene. I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't have anything in common with anyone that has a misconception of black metal. You know, I, I, I still consider it a quite secluded, uh, esoteric almost niche of music, and and that's that what I that's what I feel belonging to. You know, but but I I don't look at it in this larger scale with all these. All, all this bullshit that is going on around and all, like, like I said, you know, just people that have gotten, gotten it all wrong and that live on the internet and, you know, I don't know what they do, these people. <laughs> I have but, uh, absolutely no idea yeah, either, but... But, but it's, it's weird, uh, you know, and I, I guess we're playing in front of a lot of them tonight. It's just that... Yeah, those who yeah. are like horns up, like, like, let's take selfies and let's take yeah, it's, fan it's, photos. It's, and it's a different, uh, they come from a completely different angle that, than we do. And there's, there, I mean, if, if I would let them, if I would allow them to like occupy my, my, my space and my, my, you know, patterns of thoughts in daily, I would have quit doing this a long time ago. But to me, I put on INRI by Sarcophago and then I don't give a fuck, you know, that, like that's, that's where my heart is. Now talking of which, you have quite tightly knit group with Vatane. You have had uh, members long time in the band mm -hmm. and uh, as such one could not wonder but think that you have a really really strong, maybe small but really strong scene in the sense of keeping some kind of a camaraderie or brotherhood. Uh, how much you think you or your band is part of any kind of a <coughs> local scene or do you have some kind of a brotherhood that goes even beyond the borders of given the country, or is it just like, I don't know, different circles? Yeah, I, I think I, I understand what you mean, but I, um, it goes a little bit in, I mean, we've been around for 25 years and people come and go, and a lot of the bands that we were very close to in the beginning, they don't exist anymore, or they've grown up and, you know, become normal prisoners of society, and, and uh, then you meet new people and, you get close to them for a while and then they disappear or they die or they you know they quit doing music or you know so, so for us it's it's been a little bit in waves like that but there's also been some bands that we have, that have been you know that we have been close to since the beginning absolutely and that we still feel i would say quite close to like catharsis and malign and despel omega and and those bands that we formed a close kinship with in the, at, in the start 
and other bands as well. Destroy 66 is a good example. Now this is something that I want to ask because I've always felt being within more or less in the scene since like I don't know mid 90s mm. and I've al always felt like being a very social person I know it's kind of a weird in terms of black metal and all but yeah, I don't but I mean that. some people felt like you, you are you cannot be that social you have to be more I don't know secluded or whatever okay. when, when you're part of that thing but I've always felt that one of the key elements is that, that you're sharing your ideology and philosophy in some levels with the like-minded people and of course we have that a lot in Finland and I think that's what keeps that flame burning like it's mm. a, in, in in the essence it's only like a handful of people sure. doing the music and making these important moves whether Absolutely. it's about organizing a festival like you know say steel fest in mm. Finland mm. or those bands that are you know making true black metal and right. just like selling out how do you think it's um, in Sweden is it like the same like that you have a certain amount of people who are doing the real deal and the rest of are just like you said coming I, and going? I hear you. yeah exactly well I, I think Finland definitely has the upper hand when it comes to a more tight-knit community especially when it comes to black metal uh, which is great you know uh, steel has being a good example of that and the bands around it uh, but but um, Sweden not as much uh, Sweden has more like to the, you know the the underground in, in in Sweden or like the more extreme bands they they come and go in, in a much faster pace you know they exist for five years then they disappear you know they find that there's no money or fame or whatever <laughs> yeah I don't know what it is so they like they don't just don't have it in them I don't know I mean the the, the bands that have been going for a long time in in Sweden they're they're more I don't know they're they're bigger bands I guess you know like um, uh, that, with a few exceptions, of course, uh, but but um, yeah, no, there's there's unfortunately that that sense of uh, uh, of community is something that belongs more to the past in Sweden, I think. But on the other hand, you know, we tour a lot. We are not that you know Sweden bound as such. You know, we we are a touring well, international, band. way more international. Yeah, I suppose. So, so in that sense, there's definitely bands around the world that perhaps together I, I would say like form form a community like like-minded individuals in the yeah end. yeah exactly and and uh, just people just good people you know like uncomplicated fucking no no drama queens and no you know charlatans or uh, just just good simple people that that know that understand what we're doing you know because after this long time also you know and doing quite having a like the, 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 the expressing ourselves the way we have for 25 years you're bound to meet a lot of people that are like they're they're very in they're very keen on understanding what it is, where we come from or what it is that we do and they, they want to twist and turn everything and they want to like question you and they want and it's it's fine you know but it's like in the end, I think we navigate towards people that are not like that. People that you just you just meet their their glance, and you know that you're of the same kind. You know, uh, that's I find that at least when I get older, that I I have a, like less and less. I give less and less space for these like nosy teenage people. I, I don't have I don't have the energy for those. Could I even say that there is a wolf pack, and then there's a bunch of dogs, and while we look the same, we're not really the same. In the yeah. sense of like being the wolves among like like you said their mm -hmm. camaraderie among the certain bands where you're like okay we we and we understand one another but those dogs mm. they should bite another bone yeah something like that and and uh, I mean even more so I think this this kind of uh, sense of alienation and, and and being like different differentiated from from people around you I think for us it's even more clear at like a festival like this for example it gets quite like obvious i mean at steel fest not as much as here you know what i mean yes i definitely so, know the so, difference so um and but here's the thing i mean i i kind of thrive on that feeling as well you know i, I enjoy walking into vatain to a vacuum open air and i enjoy hearing in the back of my head what people are saying from their you know, <laughs> yeah. but you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. It, it, it is yeah. it, it's it is a it is a good feeling to be alienated in the right uh, in the right moment. You know, and 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 
what it also comes down to is when we eventually get on that stage in Wacken, you perform in front of people that are uh, that, that that are not really prepared for what you're going to give them, you know. And, uh, like you tossing torches to them. Yeah, for example. I, rem- I, example. I saw that some footage. I don't know which country it might have been Poland or Germany or whatever last year mm. a friend of mine saw and I'm like okay that's pretty go- goddamn ballsy did you like just like not giving a fuck and those torches were flying it looked fantastic but also probably a lot of people were like upset like what the fuck is happening here yeah our booker wasn't so happy <laughs> I guess so <laughs> and I also remember you handling some like really horrible smelling blood early days when like played in Helsinki and you really didn't give a fuck. It's what we do. Has that changed in, at any level? Um, not really. <laughs> not really. I mean, well, it, it, it's not about being, you know, um, um, it, it, it's not so much about like uh, confrontationalism perhaps uh, anymore, but it's, it comes down to the fact that when we go on stage and our concert begins, uh, other rules apply, and uh, other, you know, uh, th- there, it is a very different time and space that exists on that stage, and it's going to be a pretty wild and and often violent and and, and sometimes dangerous situation, and. Uh, that's uh, that's just the, the the way it is, and I think it should be like that on every black metal show. In 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 the in an ideal world, people would be, if not afraid, at least you know, have a sense of unpre- unpredictability when they when they come to a black metal show. They shouldn't go there and like, yeah, let's check out these guys in corpse paint and you know, like. With leather pants doing their doing their thing on stage. It's like atmospheric. That mm-hmm. that, sh- that that shouldn't be the, the that shouldn't be the the way people feel when they go to a black metal show. I think. But I, again, you know, I'm yeah. Now talking of which, even some borders seem to be challenging for Vatain as well. I'm talking about one of your members who had to be discharged from the band because of certain political comments. Um, how that made you feel like you had this uh, lineup change with reasons which are not exactly related to black metal as such or satanic topics? Uh, well, the problem is that they are not black metal related, and that's that's what 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 made it, you know, a very frustrating situation to deal with. But uh, yeah, I mean, what it comes down to is basically that that set who who. Um, who is the guy we're talking about here, he wasn't really interested in playing, you know, the apology game or the, you know, like explaining game that, that people expected. Exactly. And I wasn't that interested on talking about it in every interview or, or defending something that I myself felt that I didn't really know what to say about because I wasn't the one who were exactly. putting the arm up, you know. So so from, for that, that was the whole situation. And... Uh, and uh, I mean, we between us, it's everything is good. But it's, it was just a, like sometimes you end up in this dead, dead end situations, like a deadlock the grip, yeah. where it's just like, yeah, that's the way it's gonna go. Now, what do you think about this nowadays cancel culture, wokeism, and all these like, if you play at certain festival, we're gonna cancel your ass. You're not gonna do touring and all that stuff, which seems to be more and more common these days, mm. especially in extreme metal, which is supposed to be extreme mm-hmm. and uh, it seems like some parties or individuals are very keen to extorting like we're gonna fucking cancel the whole fucking genre and I'm like I, sometimes I'm like yeah please do it please mm-hmm. cancel all the fake bands and we can focus on the real deal mm-hmm. but it seems like now we're having this kind of a weird power game that it seems like nobody is winning of the situation the bands are not really getting cancelled but obviously some uh, promoters and uh, hotels or venues and staff mm. and even bands are of course kind of uh, getting hurt by the collateral damage thing but it seems like nothing is really changing what do you think about this current weird times and phenomena i mean i haven't thought about it so much now in in a few years there was a lot of that going on there for a while during during this uh, incident with set and so on uh, but um 
and, and we haven't been, you know, that affected by it. I know we're, we're not allowed to play in Berlin, for example. That's like a, that's a thing. But I mean, what, what's what's going on? With I, I don't know. I haven't really asked much. Okay. We just we just don't get booked there. <laughs> but uh, Germans are very sensitive, as we all know. But but uh, to answer your question, what I think about it, what I think about bands getting cancelled and so on, and this whole uh, this cancel culture. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I think it's pretty good, actually. Uh, I think uh, I think it's a little bit embarrassing that black metal hasn't been questioned or opposed, or you know, uh, like uh, that people haven't freaked out about it more uh, than they have in the past. And I think it's a very natural reaction when you know, you all of a sudden have black metal festivals where 5,000 people go and you have black metal on the TV and you have black metal everywhere. I mean, yeah, okay, good. It's, it's, a, it's absolutely an interesting form of art that in, in a sense concerns everyone, but it's also a very problematic form of art. It is, it is very, uh, it, it, it deals with extremely controversial subjects, complicated subjects, uh, you know, uh, a lot of, there's there's a lot of taboo around what, what what black metal is about, and I find it, yeah, a little bit embarrassing actually that that black metal bands haven't been extreme enough or confrontational enough to even gain that sort of reaction until now. Now we're getting a little bit of you know cancellations. We're getting question. What well, what are you doing? What is this? Is it political? What do, what do you want to do? I like that. You know, I have no problem at all answering those questions. A lot of people seem to have. Yeah, they start almost sweating. Yeah, like. And if, like, but but then they shouldn't be there in the first place. If you want to play black metal, you should also know what you stand for. You you cannot you cannot just like, you know, be upset when someone asks you a question about your political beliefs or your your agenda. You should be able to answer that. You know, if you're an artist and you have an extreme message in your music, you. You know, you're an idiot if you can't answer those questions. If you can't, do, go and do something else, or don't do interviews, or don't do public appearances. But but you know, you have to be able to stand up for your beliefs and what it is you're doing with your band. So in that sense, I think it's pretty good. You know, I think it's good that people have to stand up for like answer complicated questions. What do you talk about? Uh, what do you talk about death so much? What do you talk about, you know, Satan? What, what is this Satan? What, what, what is that, you know? Uh, uh, fuck you. You know, you're a fucking woke uh, conspiracy theorist. Yeah, but just answer the fucking question. Exactly. You know? so, so I think it's good. I, I, I'm so fucking tired of... Uh, I've had to answer so many fucking questions these 25 years and explain myself to... Until I fucking almost fell asleep, you know? For everything that I've done, for everything that I've said, everyone wanted to know, why do you do that? Why do you do that? Why do you have blood? You know, yeah, and I answer. I can answer. I know exactly why we do what we do. But other people should also have to answer. You know, it, I can't do the, the, the narrative for the entire fucking black metal scene. There should be other people who, are, who speak up for what they believe. And in that sense, I think uh, I like uh, that black metal is being questioned like that. When it comes to the political side, uh, I think it's more like that. That thing is more like tiresome, you know. A bit like, aren't we through discussing this now? I mean, come on, you know. Like, aren't we? Isn't, isn't it like? I mean, some black metal bands have Nazi affiliations. Mm -hmm. Most don't. What's the what, what, what's what's more to talk about? You know, don't listen to them if you don't like it. You know, if someone asks us if we have it, I will tell them, no, we don't. Yeah, mm -hmm. what, what, what more is there to say? You know? This is a very curious case because recently, like a few weeks ago, mm. Mayhem was cancelled in Brazil because of some Nazi allegations mm. and they were based on 30 years old things said by, I don't know, younger version of Hellhammer or whatever weaker yeah. they said and they didn't even bother to do any kind of a background check. They just decided to play safe game and got cancelled and you know, like Torque for mm. that one incident some 17 years ago, yeah. still getting cancelled for like Australia tour. I think we, we live in very, very fucking strange times. Yeah, but again, you know, like, I mean, th there are many photos of, of uh, Hellhammer with a swastika armband mm -hmm. and there are, they, do a, they do Buddhism covers even though their leader and creator of the entire band was murdered by that same guy. I find that extremely distasteful. But, uh, but, but anyway, that, that they do, but they don't get questioned about it. Now they got cancelled, but it's like, 
yeah, but how strange is that? Talk about it then, explain. Mm, exactly. well, well, I mean, like just, I, I would, I have had to explain myself every time we did something half as controversial. They should also do that, you know. They're old guys, they should know what they, what they're, what they stand for by now. Yeah. Now, given these controversies, when we're talking about it, for example here, I find very, very strange, also happened in another uh, Norwegian festival, it's like they have Nordic mission booth, which is essentially a Christian label selling stuff, mm -hmm. and nobody seems to, you know, blink an eye, and I would say this wouldn't, you know, fly in Finland, this yeah. wouldn't happen, and I'm like, like, how, the, how this happened, the guys who have been opposing Christianity and, you know, these old... Abrahamic religions for 30 years, mm. suddenly like, okay, you can bring your booth. We're just like, okay. And I think like, what the fuck is going on? Like, mm. how, how come this came to be? Yeah. Has similar things happened in Sweden or has it been more healthy in a way? <laughs> we can use no, that we don't, we haven't had any, anything like that. I think uh, it's, I think it's like, I don't know, it's a Norwegian thing. Only in Norway, hashtag. Yeah, I don't know, like they tried to tone it down and, you know, like kind of put the wet blanket on the fires of the past, kind of, but you, you won't be able to do that. I mean, however they sugarcoat it, the reasons why we are all here today at Inferno Festival in Oslo has to do with burning churches, murders, exactly. prison sentences, suicides. No one can wash that away. That's, that's why, you know, that's a, a very big reason why we're all sitting here today, because it was such an explosive, extreme environment. And, and you know, if it, if it hadn't been for that, Inferno Festival wouldn't exist, you know. Exactly. A lot but, of these festivals wouldn't exist at all. Yeah, and, and it's, there's, there's I think it's embarrassing when people try to sugarcoat it. They, you have to, you have to either stand up for for that past or <laughs> or do something else. There's plenty of music genres out there, especially in heavy metal. You know, like you, you, But but I don't know. I mean, I I, I don't know how how Inferno, for example, uh, talks about these kind of things. But but it's just a general feeling that that I think that you know, yeah, it was something that happened in the past. They were so young, those guys. Yeah. Absolutely, there's all kinds of explanations, but the fact remains. Exactly. It's because of how explosive it was, how passionate it was, how fiery it was, that it, you know, that, that it managed to live on for such a long time and resonate, you know, decades later. Uh, that, that's, that's my firm belief. Uh, now, coming from a little bit for, for this cancellation thing, I think it seems like people don't even give a damn it about changing things really they just feel to be virtue signaling like I, I made an importance when I was part of the band getting cancelled or whatever so yeah. I, I think it, it's like some people also say that <clears throat> these topics like Satanism or devil worship uh, or any kind of uh, extreme esoteric or even religious topics are like mm. yeah but nobody gives a damn and fighting Christianity is so outdated and all that stuff like you should focus on something else, and then they play the political card. But I feel like they're probably more shook if they see like a naked genitalia. Mm. But all they want to do is make a fuss about themselves and say, "I made a change, even though nothing changes." Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know what these people's agendas are. Those, like those, if you mean those, like young people who get shows cancelled and so on. I, I don't really know where they come from. That kind of stuff didn't really exist when I was young. You know. I have a, I don't know, it's like a kind of a, like a, a snitch culture somehow, you know, that like rat people out so they can't do something, you know, it's like yeah. a little bit like a, yeah, it's like a snitch culture in a way, yeah. and, and that, that's a bit weird, I mean, for, I, th there were, there were of course like confrontational uh, situations, a lot of them when we were younger and went to metal shows, but they were physical, you know. They they were fights on the streets or in the at the shows or you know like because people were upset about something. It's, sometimes it was political. Sometimes it was just you know. Sometimes it was a lot of times it was like a vegan thing was very big in Sweden for in the in the early to mid 90s. We had bands like Refused and you know mm -hmm. all these like straight edge bands and that was a bit of a clash with with at some black and death metal shows where. Uh, in Aternum, I remember uh, cut the head of a of a rabbit on stage, and and uh, and this vegan uh, group just stormed the venue, and it was it was a fight, you know, but it was never 
a question of that next time in a Terranium play that, that, you know, they were being cancelled by silent, anonymous people. Either, I don't know, I mean, if you have a problem with something, just, just come there and, yeah. and, 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 you know, say what you think or, or you know, fucking throw a Molotov cocktail into the building. But, like, this kind of, this kind of snitch culture to me is, is a little bit like... I don't know, it's just sad. It's like a modern, modern, like sad form of, of, of culture, I think. Do you think that humankind has become softer and more fragile nowadays, considering like all these internet warriors <sighs> making their statements and doing it anonymously rather than confronting like, like mano y mano, like, I have a problem with you, let's just fucking deal with it, yeah. rather than like, Eric is an yeah. asshole. <laughs> now what, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's because, uh, you know, we have, we have biologically evolved into a softer species, to put it like that. I don't, I don't really, th I, I think it's... I mean, more like cultural no, but, but, level of... Yeah, but, but, but it's, it's the whole internet thing, you know, and, and, and it, everything that that has led to. And, and uh, people can hide behind the screen. They can have a, you know, they, 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 can, they can hide behind it. And, you know, express their opinions anonymously and they can, you know, have, have an impact without showing their own face. And that's, I, that's a problematic. But, but on the other hand, it's like, it is what it is. It's there and you, and you have to find ways around it. If, you, if, if, that's, if that's an opposition that you find yourself facing, then you have to find a way of, 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 of defeating it or to, to work with it in a way that you can still, you know, do your, do your bidding, so to say. Uh, so, I don't know. I mean, we, we, uh, we've faced a lot of, you know, accusations and like we've been in a lot of situations where we were, where we were referred to as, you know, a little bit too complicated, too controversial and so on. But we, I don't know, we, we kind of, we, we talked about it, we, we explained ourselves and we continue doing it and people often if, if you look them in the eye and tell them what you think and what you're here to do, then most of them can back away because that's... I think they, a lot of these people, they just want to test you, you know, and then you have to be able to stand your ground and, and, and speak up. It's kind of a trial by fire to see, like, you know, if you really can't stand the heat, then yeah. it's fucking okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 like I said, you know, I, I don't... I mean, of course, it's, it's fucking... It's a it's a horrible thing this whole cancel, whatever you know what they call it. But 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 it has it has its its points also because it it kind of steers bands and artists in a direction where they're a bit more alert. They need like to back they, against the wall. Yeah, a little bit. You know, you need you need to you need to know what it is you stand for. So you, you perish or defend yourself. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, do you have any kind of conf confrontations or, you know, differences among the band? Like, Eric, you cannot do this kind of set of lyrics or you cannot do this kind of riff because it's out of borders. Or do you ever have, like, the family fights? Or are you like, like we are happy family and among the time and we get things sorted out? Um, no, but we, we, uh, we are very much a, a team in... in in, in almost every aspect, I would say. I mean, we, we never, we hardly ever fight, you know? We, we have, we, we've had this thing for, uh, since I think the beginning actually, where we've all been aware of, of, of how, how we perceive Athena as, as something that is, you know, a bit bigger than, than the sum of its parts, you know? It, it, it's more than, the thing that we have decided how it's going to be together, it became something else. It became, you know, it became something else, uh, a, a separate entity almost, rising from 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 what from our work. And when you have that, you know, a, a bit, bit among yourselves and, and in between yourselves in a group, um, all these like small problems and differences and uh, things that usually like make bands fall apart maybe they uh, 
they've been almost like forbidden to, to, to take any space. It's like if, if you're at war and you're, 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 uh, you're, uh, you're in a... You're in a... You're in the army, you're, you're, in, the, you're, you're in your group of soldiers. Uh, you know, uh, if you think the other guy smells bad or if you think he's, he speaks weird about his mother or if you think that he, you know, does shitty cooking or if you think that he has strange political views or whatever, it doesn't, it doesn't belong to the discussion. You have a greater goal and you have to be able to have your, each other's backs, you know, at all times. And, uh, and that's been very much the case for, for Sounds us. like a very healthy um, receipt for... You need to have a healthy receipt if you're going to do something with other people for that long. You, you cannot, you know, if there is a problem, you, you need to deal with it. And I, I don't say that it's been like a completely straight and, and, and narrow road. It, it's, it's been, it's, there's been a lot of chaos, both around and, and in, and in Vatain, but... but uh, but we kept a steady course, you know, and we always, in the end, we always had each other's backs. That's good to hear. Yeah. Now, steering towards the end, what's the best thing in being part of Rotane? Um, the, yeah, the best thing, the, the, there are many good things, but, but I will try to narrow it down. I think, you know, on, on a personal level, I have been able to uh, to live the life that, that I wanted to to live, you know, on, on, on terms that it, we've dictated ourselves, uh, we've been able to uh, uh, we, we've been able to do important things every day, which which I uh, am extremely grateful for. You know, like I, I don't I don't I haven't wasted my time, and. Uh, I have been able to grow a lot as a, as a as a person and 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 like in 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 this context that that Vatain is because it it has presented so many weird fucking situations and and deep situations and and, and, and explosive situations and you you grow well out of all these these experiences so that if that makes and it's a bit loose answer maybe, but that, that I think, as the sum of that is, is one of the best things about being in Matane, you know, what, what it gives back. Uh, it, it gives back a, a, an entire life, you know. Um, but also being able to express myself creatively uh, as a... Uh, you know, and, and and the fact that that's what I now do in my life, that that's that's of course, like, priceless. Which one is more important for you, as a member of a band, mm -hmm. doing new albums, writing songs, and writing lyrics, than presenting them on stage doing gigs and tours? Uh, fuck, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what what's the what the more important thing is. I mean, playing live is for sure what we do the most, out of all these things. Uh, and sometimes I wish that, uh, you know, a tour could have been replaced for a period where you're just in the same room writing music. Uh, but, but generally speaking, I mean, we wouldn't be playing live as much if it wasn't one of, one of, one of the things that we consider the most meaningful. Yeah, you're not exactly dark, dark throne doing album no, after exactly. album and staying home. Yeah, <laughs> um, and uh, look where that went, you know. Yeah. So maybe, maybe I, I <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of glad that we're not. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, playing live is is what Vatain does first and foremost. That's that's our main activity as a band, and uh, as long as that feels meaningful and, and uh, like as, uh, as long as it really gives something back that's what we'll continue to do but on the other hand I have no problem seeing uh, Vatain as a band that doesn't tour at all and only does other things you know uh, artistic things uh, music and, and other you know so but but right now and, and for the past 15 years at least that's that's been our main activity and, and, and uh, it's, it looks like it will continue uh, like that for at least at least another year. That's about as far as we plan. Second to last question related to that. Sure. Let's play a little bit of foretelling. 
Mm -hmm. Where will we be in, say, three, five years? Where are you still putting yourself into as you get older and new plans ahead? Yeah. I, um, I find that, that uh, the, the longer you do something, the more, uh, <laughs> the more creative you, you, you get if you do it the right way. You know, if, you, if you're careful about your, what, what you're doing, you're, you're caref careful about your, your trade, th then, uh, then, then th that's the way it should be. You know, like a carpenter who starts out when he's 14 making a share, when he's 40 he's probably building a house or a temple or, you know, like, and hopefully, hopefully continuing on like that through life. Uh, In which, which phase you are now? Building the temple or...? I think yeah. we, yeah. I think we've been, I think we've been building on a temple for quite a long time. But 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 we're definitely able to do things now that we weren't able to do ten years ago. So and it sounds on the album as well. Thank you. Yeah, I, I feel that way definitely as a songwriter uh, and as a lyricist, but also as a group. You know that 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 we're 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 in a yeah. It, it's it's an escalating process. And uh, with that being said, to answer your questions, I think that's, that's the way it's going to go. Uh, but then I don't know if that means, you know, that we're going to have a much more extravagant stage or if it means that we're going to do a much more, you know, uh, f detailed songs or whatever. I, I, don't, I don't know where it will lead us, but it's for sure a process of escalation and, and of, of, uh, of kind of... Uh, Leveling up, but 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 how that how you define that up is, is it, it, that can be many different ways. You know, it can also it can also mean that we're we're finally gonna do a satanic blood sounding album. You know, with just <laughs> totally simple riff, but better than it has ever been done. Who knows? This is actually very good that you mentioned the Von connection related to the name. Yeah, of course. Album. But let's there. not tackle that. I'll let you go after this last question. Sure. What kind of a one uh, philosophical uh, line of wisdom or whatever you would give to the audience? Like, now, Eric, we need to know what drives you on what. What is your philosophical take? Like, one wisdom only. Mm -hmm. Like, your favorite one. Yeah. Make sure to be able to look yourself uh, in the mirror uh, with a sense of uh, nobility and with a sense of... Uh, security and with a sense of direction make sure you know the nature of your own will you know because then you can meet your own glance in the mirror without feeling insecure without without being you know feeling misled or, or wherever you're going make make sure of that make sure of it every day um, that's that that would be from the top of my head my my uh, uh, my philosophical uh, advice for today, Eric Danielson, Inferno Festival 2020. Yeah, it might change. All right, thank you very much yes. for your time. Thank you, Derek. It's a pleasure. Now, check out the music in case you haven't, properly, hopefully, you're already done with the whole discography and all like you should. And in case you haven't, I say start with the newest one and then progress. You will find interesting gems along the way. This is Inferno, this is Rauda, this is Eric and Atain. See you on the other side. Bye bye. Cheers. Thank you so much. Fucking great. Very okay. good. That was uh, enjoyable. Good to hear. Like I said, I don't know. I don't can predict in which ways these sometimes go. No, exactly. And that's uh, that's I think. Uh...